The topic today is two bad boys. The preacher and uh, the prostitute. All found in the Holy Scriptures. Now to our great audience right around the world, right across North America, down into the Caribbean, right over to Australia, around the world, into the Middle East, we send today our warmest greetings. Now I've got just a little bit of news I'd like to share with you. Today is my birthday. Now I'm going to ask you, just just be candid with me. Do I look okay for a guy of 71 years of age? How, how do I look for a guy? Look, you know, I can I can move. I, I I've got some agility. I've got some. I've got good breathing. How would I, would you say I'm okay for a guy of 70, 70 years? I wish I were. Today. It is my birthday, and uh, I'm 84 years of age. Mm. Somebody said amen. I say amen too. I'm I'm just so glad that I made it. I've been in the ministry for, uh, if you include my time at Avondale College, now called Avondale University. But if I include my time at Avondale College training for the ministry... And for the time that I spent as a coal porter, that's a person who sells books generally from door to door, I've been in this ministry preaching the word of God without a break for 67 years. (laughs) Which is a long time. And today I want to say on my birthday, glory be to God, and I thank my wife and my family, I've got a really great family, and I, I thank all of my friends. Now, when do you get to this age, you start to think about them. <laughs> well, really, you should start earlier. But when I've got to this age, the last 10 years, I've been thinking of preparation for eternity because the time is going by. And you know that the most important thing is to be right with God. And so I prepared this talk today because I want you to know what I believe from the Bible is the truth about the gospel of Christ. When you get to my age and you realize you may not have a lot more time, All the palaver quickly goes. All of the plain talk and all of the religiosity is discovered to be simply nothing. And what you want more than anything else is to be right with God. I'm going to talk to you today about the gospel that I preach. I preach that grace is the only way to be saved. God saves the most unlikely people while condemning those who are Outwardly righteous, but inwardly rotten. I've discovered in all my years that one of the worst things in the world is man-made religion. I'm not talking about the religion that comes from God. I'm talking about that ugly thing that is so popular in North America and around the world. Man-made religion. It is the blight, the curse of the human race, and God has a better way. I've discovered this too. This is an amazing truth, that man is far worse than he ever feared to think. Think of the atrocities that are going on in the world today as I talk to you. Man is far worse than he ever feared to think, but God is far better than he ever, ever dared to hope. And so the the talk today, I'm going to start, this is going to be broken up into two parts, but the first part is the preacher and the prostitute. And I want you to take your Bible, if that's convenient with you, and come with me to Luke chapter 7 and verse 
36 to 50. Luke chapter 7 and verse 36 down to 50. I'm going to read this passage to you. Then one of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him. And he went to the Pharisee's house and sat down to eat. And behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner, a prostitute, when she knew that Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil and stood at his feet behind him weeping. And she began to wash his feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. And she kissed his feet and anointed them with the fragrant oil. Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he spoke to himself saying, this man, if he were a prophet, would know who and what manner of woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answered and said to him, Simon, the Pharisee, I have something to say to you. So he said, teacher, say it. <laughs> Simon thought it and Jesus heard it. Verse 41, there was a certain creditor who had two debtors. One owed 500 denarii, the other 50. And when they had nothing with which to repay, he freely forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him more? Simon answered and said, I suppose the one whom he forgave more. And he said to him, you've rightly judged. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. You gave me no kiss, but this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet since the time I came in. You did not anoint my head with oil, but this woman has anointed my feet with fragrant oil. Therefore, I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. Then he said to her, Your sins are forgiven. And those who sat at the table with him began to say to themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? Then he said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Now this story about this woman who anoints our Lord, the woman who is a sinner or who is a prostitute, is evidently so important that it is mentioned in all of the Gospels. Now for those of you who wish to take notes, I'm going to give you the references. Matthew 26, verses 6 to 13. Mark chapter 14, verses 3 to 11. Luke chapter 7, 36 to 50. That is what we read. And then John chapter 12 and verses 1 down to 11. Now this Mary Magdalene or this woman is one of the most famous characters in the history of Christianity. And she has become, has Mary Magdalene, a center of controversy. The Roman Catholic Church once taught that this woman, Mary Magdalene, who had been a sex worker, had been redeemed by the grace of God and they had made her into one of the great saints of the Catholic Church. But the Roman Catholic Church has changed its theology and its identity of this woman. Mary Magdalene has been scrubbed and sanitized. So as a venerated saint, she is not tainted by the sin of prostitution. But it does appear when we study the scriptures that this woman, Mary Magdalene, had been a prostitute. Now come, and this talks 
not so much about the greatness of her sin as it talks about the greatness of the grace of God. Now, please come with me to John chapter 12 and verses 1 down to 8. And here we have another one of these stories. John chapter 12, verses 1 down to 8. Then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus, who had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead. There they made a supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. Then Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spikenard, anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. And one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, who would betray him, said, Why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the money box and he used to take what was put in it. But Jesus said, let her alone. She has kept this for the day of my burial. For the poor you have with you always, but me you do not always have. There is evidence that this person in John chapter 12, as in all of these stories, is actually the ex-prostitute Mary Magdalene. Now... This week I've been studying this subject with some intensity and I went to the site which is open for Avondale University and I read there an article by Dr. Grenville Kent. I don't plan to read it today because it's a long scholarly argument but there you have some very compelling reasons why the woman who was the hero of all of these stories, this Mary, the sister of Martha and Lazarus is none other than Mary Magdalene. Now, if you notice now Luke chapter 7 and verse 36 and 37, Luke chapter 7 and verse 36 and 37, it says... Then one of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him and he went to the Pharisee's house and sat down to eat and behold a woman in the city who was a sinner when she knew that Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil. Now it is plain, it is a fact that Bethany, this little town was the home of Lazarus and Mary and her sister, Martha. It was also the hometown of a Pharisee who had been a leper whose name was Simon. Magdalene is an interesting word. It comes from Magdala, a town near Galilee where Mary had been living and working. Magdala was a a prosperous town in Israel, but it had one thing even greater than prosperity. It was totally corrupt. It was a place that was filled with prostitutes. And Mary had been a prostitute in Magdala and she was well known and that is why she had this name Mary Magdalene. It is apparent that she meets Jesus. Her life is changed by the grace of God because this woman had been filled also with demons and finally the girl who'd run away from home to have a good time comes back to the little town. She comes back to Bethany. Lazarus, her brother, 
is raised from the dead. She has a career name. Mary Magdalene. And when everybody hear, anybody hears her name, they listen. Mary Magdalene? If she were living today, maybe she would have been called Mary Hollywood. Mary Las Vegas, Mary San Francisco. And then Simon the Pharisee puts on a big banquet. And Mary does an act of great extravagance. She gets this nard or spikenard and she anoints the Lord. This spikenard you don't get down at the local 7-Eleven. It comes from near the foothills of the Himalayan mountains. And so it comes overland, most likely through Arabia and finally comes to Israel. It's expensive. The Bible says it's worth a year's wages. She's got it in a flask. This precious ointment, and it's worth, we would say today, $100,000. And she pours it over the Lord because she's extravagant. Let me describe the scene. She stands at his feet. The men are half reclining around the table. The Bible says she lets down her hair. The Jews had a rule that if a woman let down her hair in the presence of men, any man other than her husband, that was grounds for divorce. So she takes spikenard, oil and she pours it on the Lord the house is filled with the perfume now Simon was a member of a select group of preachers he had immense prestige he was a Pharisee they were the very best of the best They were the people who were against idolatry and worldliness. They came from the days of the Maccabees. They arose because of the abominable practices of Antiochus Epiphanes in the second century. And they had read the scriptures and the Bible says ever so plainly that if you break the law of God, you are going to bring upon yourself the judgments of God. And so the Pharisees were a reaction to idolatry and worldliness. They were not bad people. They were the very best people in Israel, outwardly at least. When Simon sees this, he's absolutely scandalised. I can remember when I was a very impressionable young person when I was 17 years of age which is a few years ago going into a church in Brisbane Queensland a little church and two men came in in black suits (laughs) they looked great in their black suits and white shirts and black ties and then they fell down on their knees and they started to pray I thought goodness they're the most righteous people I've ever met (laughs) I discovered later they were anything but. But the Pharisees were impressive people. If you turn Matthew 23, you have a description of the Pharisees. Matthew 23, 23 to 25. Were you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin? and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faith. These you ought to have done without leaving the other undone. Blind guides who strain out a gnat and swallow a camel. 
Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you cleanse the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of extortion and self-indulgence. And so the Pharisees were the great defenders of orthodoxy. They were the ones who were determined to save Israel from idolatry. They were the best. But the problem was this, and I can say the Pharisees are not dead, you know. The problem was this, the Pharisees were great on the outward side, but inwardly they were full of rottenness, and Jesus said this. Now come back to the story of this anointing with the Pharisee being there. Luke chapter 7 and verses 38 and uh, 39 and 40. Luke chapter 7, verse 38 and onwards. It says, talking about Mary, and stood at his feet behind him weeping. And she began to wash his feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. This was an absolute scandal. And she kissed his feet, scandalous and anointed them with the fragrant oil. And when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he spoke to himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would know who and what manner of woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. The Bible tells us he thought it in his heart. Verse 40, And Jesus answered and said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. So he said, teacher, say it. (laughs) The Pharisee thought it and Jesus heard it. Because nothing can be hidden from the eyes and the mind of almighty God. So the Pharisee, the man who is the defender of Israel, who is the saviour of the church, he says, how can he be the son of God and let this woman do this? And Jesus said, Simon, I've got something to say to you. Can you feel the drama? Simon, I've got something to say to you. And he says, "Um, Master, Say on. Notice what he says. Verse 40 to 43. I have something to say to you. Verse 40. Then Jesus answered and said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. So he said, teacher, say it. You see, Jesus read his mind. There was a certain creditor who had two debtors. One owed 500 denarii and the other 50. And when they had nothing with which to repay, he freely forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him more? Simon answered and said, I suppose the one whom he forgave more. And he said to him, you have rightly judged. Now the question is this, who was the greatest sinner? Who was the greatest sinner? Was Simon the Pharisee who was full of outward goodness and piety or was it this prostitute woman who was the greatest sinner? And we're going to answer that in the next part of our program as we talk about the prostitute and the preacher. Christ gives us clarity when all around us is in ruins. We can rebuild our lives on the promises of God. The new Carter Report and Hope TV Media Center has risen up from the ashes. The van is loaded with medical supplies, food and water, then driven by courageous Christians into places of danger. With a cheerful heart, they deliver hope to weary souls. 
And because of you, faithful followers of Christ, Ukrainians have been given a new song to sing. It is up and running. We are witnessing a miracle. We are committed to keeping it operating and expanding. God is not done here. Let us follow him. With your financial help, we can heal the Ukraine. Spiritual programs will be made. Supplies will be driven to those in need and new songs to the Lord will rise from the rubble. God can take any gift and multiply it to bless the Ukrainian people. Let us not forget them. Pray that the Ukraine will be restored and pray that the peace of God will prevail. Diakoyu, thank you. Your gifts can be sent to the address on the screen or visit our website. God bless you and thank you for being a part of the Carter Report family. Pastor John Carter has taken us around the world to broaden our knowledge of the Bible. From remote places, he has brought us new insights into the scriptures. Now he is bringing these teachings closer to home, your home. He is asking you, followers of the Carter Report, to share any questions you may have about scripture, religion, and the challenges you face in your everyday life. First, record your questions on your cell phone. Then send these by email to question to Carter at gmail.com. Watch for your recorded question and hear the answer from Pastor Carter. Jesus is the answer and we welcome your questions. For a copy of today's program, please contact us at P.O. Box 1900, Thousand Oaks, California, 91358. Or in Australia, contact us at P.O. Box 861, Terrigal, New South Wales, 2260. This program is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you. We thank you for your continued support. May God richly bless you.